This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I think I hit the button so I can see what we're doing outside because I forgot to open the window. Uh, anyways, uh, we like to get geeky with you and have fun. We got a whole crew with us today. First of all, from Studio Duds in the Duds verse in the multi Duds, Kitty Tudis is with us. I have pie. You. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, I saw you mention you to- something. Is that a is that an Eden Park pie? No, this is Hanlon's. Hanlon's. Oh, of course, that's the other mm-hmm. choice. Yeah, I didn't know they they mm-hmm. they were the, a pie source. Yes, they are now. Ooh. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind then. Excellent. Mm-hmm. How are you doing? Have you recovered? <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about your uh, scare fest last night. <laughs> I'm doing well today. Thank you. Good. Good. Excellent. And also with me from the iPhoneography podcast, Dave Potter. Glad to be on. Glad to be on. And uh, no pie. No, you're not. You're not pieing it up. I, I am not pieing it up. No. I, I mean, I love pie. Don't get me wrong. I, I love pie. I love all kind of pie. Mm. But I just don't have any right now. And that that that's that's not right. I'm just. I may. I will have to fix that after the show somehow. I'm, I'm not, not sure how, but I will need to fix it. I'm just rocking the pumpkin spice latte. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It is fall, even though it's 80 degrees. That's how we enjoy energizing. Well, let's get into the show with our... Thing of the week! Um, so, uh, I mentioned I mentioned a, a, a Katie scare session last night. <laughs> yes. So, we decided... So, Riz and Katie play games every once in a while here in the studio. And we decided to do spooky games. Um, and I saw there was a nice bundle of the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. And, and, and Riz talks about Five Nights all the time. All mm-hmm. the time. And I was shocked by a revelation last night when we went and booted this thing up. Katie, do you remember what that revelation was for as much as Riz talks about it? No. <laughs> He's never, ever played it. He's been telling me about this game for years. And mm-hmm. he's never actually played it hands-on until last night. What are we doing here? <laughs> oh, Riz. No. <laughs> so, I, can't say, I can't say much because like, I, I do that with TikTok. I'm like, what's That's this? True. And then I'll never play this. I've never been so enamored with a game that I've watched people play it. So, and and, and, and no, there's a whole like group of people that do this. There's a whole there's that's why Twitch exists, right? Um, but you know, I it just astonished me that he has not once picked up this game or apparently properly owns it. Um, and I now own two copies of the first game. Uh, so because <laughs> I haven't played it on my phone after I watched the movie and everything. But anyways, so you got to experience some some games. We played what, a little Friday the Thirteenth, a little bit Dead by Daylight, which is kind of the same thing. Um, and, but Five Nights at Freddy is the simplest game and yet seemed to have the most jump scares. Oh, I screamed the first time, like they came to the door, I screamed mm-hmm. and I was like, ah, and then I was dead. So that <laughs> it did not go well. Riz did, did fine. He made it to night three, um, did not succeed in night three, but made it no, to night three. No, that's about all further I've gotten. So, I mean, you're basically in a room and yep, there he is. And you've closed the door already. You're waiting for the dude to go away. <laughs> uh something something it wouldn't go away he wouldn't go away he won't go away and then you can pull up the security cameras and there he comes out here he comes here he comes there he is yeah. and there you are and you're done <laughs> i could imagine i couldn't believe how much i looked over and you were playing through your shirt up like this over your nose yeah <laughs> no i was watching riz do this because i couldn't play like this but i can do this <laughs> riz. i was like <laughs> this is how I watch scary stuff. And it's a, hide so, it's like shirt. a $5 game on most platforms. It is it it it, it just feel like I've gotten the most out of it. <laughs> so, um but uh would you are you are you downloading on your phone on your Switch? You're going to play it some more, Katie? I should. Oh no, I can't put it on my Switch. Why? Um because um sometimes my Switch gets um borrowed by my <laughs> nephew. It's kind of like it's, it's, it's not a gruesome game. It's actually kind of rated for. Yeah. It's like jump scare. It's. I feel it's 
very goosebumps, if you will. Right? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So because like, they they play Among Us, and and we we talked about how um the the other games felt like Among Us mm-hmm. when you would do the hide and seek game. So they've played that. So I mean, that's not too bad. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> If they don't, if it doesn't react, if they don't act, react well. This is where you're gonna you're gonna institute the parental locks on your own uh, 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 switch, right? Um, mm-hmm. so, no, the Dead by Daylight I would not do because that was the it's uh, P versus P, <laughs> P versus E, player versus everybody, uh, and mm-hmm. and you you and kept picking the, the wanted to be the monster, <laughs> so mm-hmm. and the killer, yeah. and there's a whole thing where you you beat them and you you beat you 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 find somebody you stab them and then you put them up on a hook. <laughs> for for, yeah. for like Just a like, sacrifice <laughs> or something, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so that was really really interesting, and I was surprised because I knew you don't do good with first person uh, uh, games. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Don't make me first person. I, I have a hard time. I'll just look at my feet or the sky or the wall and be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> but yes, I did pretty well. I was proud of myself. Yeah, you did do pretty and well. Even, and then the Jason, where I was in the closet, was fun. Oh, Friday Thirteenth. Yeah, uh, you were, you had kind of a chubby. Uh, avatar and his stomach kept popping through <laughs> i went in the closet and hid and it was just like belly <laughs> was hanging out <laughs> like, no one's gonna, like, find gonna... Me. No one's <laughs> gonna find me at all um and then we poked into it was just like we just we just ran through like spooky games for a couple hours it was it was a lot of fun um the other one was uh vampire survivors oh yes which, which, yes what did i say it's uh it's basically gauntlet on crack <laughs> um i think they, yeah. they refer to it as a bullet hell game um we got to the <laughs> end of a level hold on let me see if i can see how crazy this gets at the end because you basically at the last 30 minutes <laughs> and then last minute they just come at you i hope you leveled everything up and it's just it, it it's like i think i saw something like a million hit points or something like that mm-hmm. it was nuts um but definitely worthwhile this is on game pass right now it's also on uh, apple arcade if uh, if you want to play it on the phone, and and we discovered that there was a co op version, which was amazing. I've only played this by yeah. myself. This is so much more fun with other people. So, um, oh, we had a blast. It was a good time. Yeah. So, Vampire Survivor, and these are all. I think just about. There's a Game Pass one. I, Day, Dead by Daylight, I think, is a Game Pass game. If if you want to play that, Friday the Thirteenth, I think we purchased a while ago, and I don't think it's being uh, well supported. But the Friday the Thirteenth nice because you, you they have most of the Jasons. Like, wasn't the 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 purple Nintendo Entertainment yes. System, Jason, was in there, right? Mm-hmm. That was the one chasing me. It was going to find my belly hanging out the closet. <laughs> but yeah, it was so cool. And then the music, remember the music changed, like the original. Yeah. Like when he would get close, it was like the original Nintendo's like sound. We'd be like, oh no. Yeah, but it was, it was, yeah, because yeah, you hear the... <laughs> um, and that's like kind of your indication of how close he is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, and it just turned into like like what is this eight bit sound? And it was like, oh, it's the NES version. <laughs> like hide. So, what was your favorite playing you played yesterday? Oh gosh, well, Five Nights with with Freddy or, was hilarious. It was just so fun because it was um, Five Nights Five Nights at Freddy's was so much fun because it was I was I knew I, I knew what game we were getting into and we had so but like I like the vampire one. Mm-hmm. I think it was just so much fun that we were laughing so hard, like of just like powering it up and we would laugh because uh, um my character was throwing candelabra riz was um santa water for mm-hmm. whatever reason it was called santa water and then i i you were tossing whip you had the whip thing yeah, yeah. so it was just like us just circling each other mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. like a tornado of just stuff we were tossing and hitting people with it's so it was fun it's so much fun and and then you like get a treasure and it has this, it has this this graphic that pops up and it's 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 like a freemium like dopamine hit game i think mm-hmm. and i think the original game is a freemium game on on, on the, like maybe the iphone or something like that so i think that's why there's all these elements in here um but obviously if you get on game pass you get it over on um um you know apple arcade you don't have those those kind of into it so uh, so there's a little bit of uh, things to poke at Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight. There's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. in Dead by Daylight. I- again, Friday the 13th and, and Dead by Daylight are, are kind of the same thing. You're just there's a everybody else. You know, one person's a killer. You know, it's kind of like it's, it's among us. If you know who the who the imposter is. Right. Um, yeah. And and everybody else has to, like, turn on a machine or do some tasks and try to escape or call the cops or or something to beat you or escape. Right. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It can be co-op on one side. It's one versus everybody. 
and 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 you can get a lot of characters in it like I, you, you got to purchase them of course but there is like michael myers what did i say chucky was in it i think leatherface mm-hmm. you know you know a lot of the classic monsters are, are in there um i think i saw resident evil people were in there as well so it's it's a lot of fun if you dig into it you can spend a lot of money on the avatars and everything too so uh, a lot a lot a lot of fun i think this is a co-main event correct or a co co uh, uh, uh awesome thing correct <laughs> Yes, we're co-awesomes. We're co-awesomes this week, yes. Co-awesomes. So, uh, uh, Potter, do, do you play a lot of spooky games, especially in the holiday season here? I, I really don't. No, I, I actually I don't play a lot of games, period. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not into this. Even though I, I love Halloween, I love seeing what everyone does with Halloween, I'm not into watching the spooky movies or playing the spooky games. Okay. Now, one thing I do love, and so similar to Dutter's reactions when Riz was playing, uh, if you're familiar with the show, uh, the podcast, The Morning Stream with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett, Scott does play, uh, play, you know, uh, p- p- playthroughs on various games and scary games, mm-hmm. and his jump cuts are hilarious <laughs> when he gets scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, j- just like I, I, what, 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 I forget the game, the one with the very tall vampire, vampirus, or not? Maybe she wasn't a vampire. Very tall. Resident everyone Evil cosplayer buyer. Or uh, Resident Evil, the the the, the tall white lady I, that I was going nuts for on the Resident Evil Eight. Is that what we're talking about? I I think the so. hat. Hmm? Yeah, the hat. The big yeah. hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just his complete reaction where you have this 50-year-old man who's like your height, Sorg, okay? And you see him act like this young teenager when he gets scared. Mm-hmm. You know, like... That, that's basically, ah! that was basically yeah. us last night. Yeah. You see him like, ah, shite, shite, no, no, don't you, ah! No, bees coming out of the crotch. Ah, don't do that. <laughs> oh, no. I haven't played Resident I honestly haven't played a Resident Evil game, I think, since four. So I'm not caught up on all the craziness they're doing yeah. over there. But, um, yeah, no, it just is kind of reminds me mm, of that. Mm. I almost wanted to grab one of the remakes of Resident Evil, like, two. I think it was on Game Pass. I almost threw that in there for you guys last night. But I, I felt like it would be too much uh, to get into. But, anyways. Um, no, a lot of fun. You just suggested uh, Maniac Mansion. That, you you that did scares. suggest that, yes. <laughs> if I knew that it, game still scares the crap out of me. Really? <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I, it might be on the Retro Pie. I should have, I should have seen mm-hmm. about pulling it up. Um, so I, there's got to be some remakes or something out there too for yeah. it, right? It's like, like, like you got to, yep. you got out there because that then <laughs> the Nintendo interface had to been so rough. I <laughs> <laughs> As they say, it turned yeah. me off from grabbing that game. I was like, I was so interested in it because it seemed so different at the time, mm-hmm. right? Like, like you know, you're used to Nintendo games, and here's this like scary Nintendo game. <laughs> you know, it was a Lucas Arts game, wasn't it? I think so. Like back oh. in those days when they were doing like uh, Full Throttle and Sam and Max and all those things on the PC. So you know, that might be worth going back through and see see what that's about. So, anyways. Uh, so, Ponder, I think you have a less scary, uh, awesome thing of the week. I, I do, but a little bit more expensive. Uh oh. So, this is put out by a company called Reflex. Now, they already make iPhone lenses and lenses for other mobile devices, and they have their own app. So, there's the Reflex app. Uh, there's Read Held. Um, there's another time lapse one, which is kind of the re thing going on. But this is their new Zoom. So we all know the iPhone, the uh, 15 Pro Max and the 16 Pros have a 5X Zoom. Mm -hmm. But you can't really beat physics. So this is the new 240 millimeter add-on. And you can tell it's popular. This went live today on Tuesday. Jeez. 459 backers with a hundred almost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Wow. But you can see it get, it turns that 5x into a 10x camera. Mm-hmm. And first of all, that that one blows my mind <laughs> that the um, 
the pick when it goes for the um, the hang glider. How you know crisp and clear, but they also have a version on the uh, Kickstarter where it's they they have magnet. It, the end is magnetic, and you can do macros, but you can do distance macros. Hmm. So you could be basically. Um, a foot away from a subject and still get a macro shot. Which is a big help when you're not, when you have like a, an insect or, you know, even a flower, you can't, you, I mean, it does really good with macros, but you get too close, you can shake it, you can scare an animal, you can change things around. But using that being further away makes it safer, especially if you're doing like a bee or something. Because you don't want to be that close. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen other things that this company's put out. They're a good quality company. Uh, if you want the base model, so you actually have to click on the Kickstarter to see the prices. Unfortunately, they're based in euros. It's a European company. Uh, but they do tell you approximately what it would be in US dollars. Mm -hmm. So I believe, and I'm going to double check myself here. Yeah, I got it coming up here. There you go. Okay. Okay, so there's around two. It's around two hundred dollars. That's for the early bird. For the yeah, super that's for the early bird, bird, and that is just you can tell. Um, you get the case, mm -hmm. and you get the the zoom, and that's it. So now, th this is a special case that that attaches the the, the lens for it. Exactly, exactly, because it's okay. a screw on lens. Okay. So the lens actually screws into the case. Mm -hmm. uh, for two sixty, you get two macro lenses. Mm -hmm. And it goes down and it tells you, you know, you get additional bundles. They actually have other one, or things that you can add on to it. And it gets, like I said, the 200 to yeah, you Oof. get the ultra set there. That's $940, but there are so many lens and attachments yeah. here. Yeah. So if you really want, you see the anthropomorphic lens. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the, the ultra set. Mm -hmm. So it even goes higher. Um, wow. And I think that's, yeah, that's, that's as high as it goes. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, if, and if you're serious about photography or if you need that extra reach mm -hmm. for an iPhone, um, it's not ridiculous. I mean, it's expensive, mm -hmm. but for a decent lens, a good, you know, aluminum frame on the um on the lens so the cylinder is made out of aluminum and real glass yeah you're gonna pay money you know this is literally one of those things you pay money for quality so uh, to what extent obviously the limitation other than you know the signs of the lens itself that that comes with the iphone uh, this is mm -hmm. trying to to circumvent that issue correct um right. to what extent are you getting good pictures out of here because of the lens and and are you still being held back by the size of the sensor on the phone. You are getting held back by the size of the sensor still. Okay. Because okay. there's really nothing they can do about that, unfortunately. So what is that like what are you what is that limiting for those that don't know photography? Um like what what can you do on a full censored camera? And we're talking about like right. there's literally a, a sensor in the camera, in the lens, and the physical size of that mm -hmm. and how it captures light, correct? Correct. Correct. And and when you get, let's say, a DSLR, you know, the series ones with the detachable lenses, mm -hmm. then you get either a three quarters or full frame sensor compared to what the iPhone can squeeze in there. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't get as much light. And each individual pixel, remember, the iPhone, um, the main camera Really, and a lot. This is Samsung too. If it's forty-eight megapixels, that means there's forty-eight million individual pieces, mm -hmm. you know, um, light sensing on that little chip. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting a small area at the forty-eight million individual pieces. Mm -hmm. Software can do amazing things, mm -hmm. but if you make that chip a lot larger mm -hmm. and you make that lens a lot larger you can bring in a lot more light. Mm. And when you bring in a lot more light, it helps everything. Mm -hmm. So you can do things. That's why, like, if you see people who do the ultra zoom, which, which like you guys do 
at Baja, where you have this massive zoom that you have to carry in a lens or keep holding up because it's that heavy. I believe, I believe, Katie, we call that Gary, <coughs> correct? What was that? That's the Gary. Gary, yes. yes. Ah. So if you have a Gary, um, that brings in a lot of light. And so when you zoom, you're actually getting smaller and smaller what you're doing, and the light's getting less and less. And that's physics. There, there, there's only so much you can get around that. But by saying, okay, I'm going to put a, a physical optical zoom on this, not a we're going to do digital stuff, mm -hmm. but we're going to make the lens bigger. You can see that it actually, the actual lens is bigger than what your lens is on your iPhone. So it actually brings in a little bit more light, which always helps. Um, and it just helps if you need that extra reach or for macros yep. because again software can do amazing things but it still can't get around physics you like physics and there's only so much you can do hey and i feel like we're talking so much about photography here but this could also uh because i'm looking at some of these things like and and i'm very interested to see what's happening with DSLRs and, and, and that look is, is something that I'm looking forward to playing with a bit more here. Like you could bring some of that DSLR kind of look through the lens mm -hmm. um, attached to an iPhone now, right? Yeah. Instead of like, you know, cinematic is kind of like faking it, right? And doing it. Doing exactly. It that's but all you could software, actually yeah. do it physically with a lens too. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting to me. So. Yeah. And also if mm -hmm. you're doing portraits, mm -hmm. the longer the zoom you're using for portraits, the more flattering it is. Absolutely. For portrait. So if you have a 10x, now admittedly, if you're doing a 10x portrait, you're going to have to back up. Yeah. <laughs> but the features on the face, because even if you do it on your phone right now, if you use the, let's say, the ultra wide, the, the normal, and then the tele, you'll notice on the ultra wide, the face is kind of splashed out mm -hmm. and stretched out. And mm -hmm. it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's one, and I think this is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here. This is why when you meet someone that you only see, let's say, on TV, mm -hmm. and you go, oh, my God, they're so tiny. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, because TV, because of the way the lens has to work, it stretches you out a little bit. I'm always shocked by uh, meeting some wrestlers in, in, in person. <laughs> Uh, some people just look better in person than they do on TV is kind of yeah. astonishing to me sometimes. Um, but anyways, yeah, I know there's a lot of work happening there. Uh, Katie, what are you thinking about these as, as our, uh, other resident, uh, photo bug? I like I brought my, <laughs> just leaning on Gary. Oh, there you yeah, uh, go. That's, that's yeah, what you Gary. do. There you go. Yeah. 150 to 600. So that's my stalker lens. Yep. Um, <laughs> IRL. And this reminds me of the, um, we were watching the Fast and the Furious <laughs> and, the guy had a digital S uh, DSLR and he had a lens that was pretty, <laughs> and it was like, I'm going to take your picture from this far away. So that made me laugh too. When you said about the, <laughs> I was like, Oh, it's like that. Um, but no, I love this. I think this is nice. And I would definitely, if I, if I, if I could depend on my making more money off of my phone, I would a hundred percent do that mm -hmm. because I think, I, I, I think it's pretty cool. And I think it would be very helpful to not, mm -hmm. And like Podner says, like you get that the faces look weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's and just you can't. I'm always battling with um, at what point do I have the phone do it? And at what point do I get a quote unquote pro piece of hardware to do it too? You know, mm -hmm. is it is it, you know, because I do have pro equipment sitting here or do I use my phone? And I don't know if it's just a case by case kind of thing. Like I know, you know, we, we have friends that do plenty of professional work on, on their iPhones. You know, oh, gosh, social yeah. media and things like that is plenty for something like that. And then at what point do you step up into something like that? Like, I couldn't imagine filming an entire Baja, for instance, on my phone. That, that seems almost impossible. So it is a little bit of a tool for the job. But, um, you know, and then I, I've watched people try to do wrestling shows on their phones and and it doesn't work it just it doesn't you, you're gonna need you're gonna need just a bunch of like money and equipment to make it work you know what i mean uh so i'm really curious to see how that goes just because you can <laughs> it doesn't mean you should <laughs> so. uh, um, unless of course apple's paying you money yeah to do it during the I, keynote it feels like that's the only people making like full cinematic things uh, mm -hmm. uh, for something like that right you know for me it's just like well why don't i just use my my 
Panasonic camera that does log and everything, right? Um, but no, there are, I mean, I, but it is opportunity. You know, it is like, you know, if you're doing something like, oh, I could use my worn camera on a multi camera uh, uh, interview shoot that I want to spruce up a little bit. Like, that's where I think it does come in handy. Um, There's obviously a version of that that we've been doing on our shoots on, on the road at least um, with some of these too. So, you know, that's kind of the idea there. So, <laughs> although I am to the point where I'm just like, I think I'm just going to bring two physical cameras uh, for some of these uh, that we're doing here uh, next month. So, and I'm figuring out that packing right now, actually. <laughs> Anyways. Um, cool. So that is your awesome thing. So that is, again, just for review, it's over on Kickstarter. Well, the links, of course. Uh, but that is the, what is the name of the company again? I'm trying to pull it back up. Uh, Reflex. A Reflex. Yeah, R-E-E. -E, so it's two E's, F-L-E-X. And that's the uh, Super Telephoto 240 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, Kickstarter over there. 156000 of their $10,000 goal. <laughs> so that's, uh, I think they're going to do well. Anyway. Yeah, and that, again, that's day, today is day one. Yeah, day one. They have 30 days to go. <laughs> so They'll be fine. I think, that, I think it's going to work out for them. I'm not entirely sure, but... Uh, yeah. anyways, uh, thank you everybody that does support this show, uh, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. We tried to put some extra stuff out there. You got a little bit extra, uh, Patreon stream out there. Uh, if we do a post show, um, where we, you know, we, who knows what I'll get into, uh, for, for that. Um, you know, we include that as well for you guys and, uh, and you do help support the show, help keep the servers running and everything. Thank you everybody that does support the show over at awesomecast. As, uh, I'm sorry, podcast slash awesomecast. No, patreon.com slash awesome cast. There we go. Cynthia Klosky, Michael Fedor, John DeGore, and Dave Potter. Uh, you guys can support the show too over there at Patreon. And it's a nice way to actually uh, consume the show. Uh, I know uh, sometimes um, uh, some of the shows I listen to end up on Patreon, not out of, out of exclusivity. They just didn't get their stuff on YouTube yet. So I listened to one of them today, and, it, and it's actually a really nice player. Uh, if, if you want to uh, move over there from your uh, favorite podcast app or something up, uh, to catch this show or, or others that we do here. So, all right, let's get into, we're done with the awesome thing of the week. Let's get into yep, yep, it's the news. what's out there, uh, that we want to get into Potter, You have a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, well, let me do the don't buy a Mac now. Don't buy a Mac now, and then we'll have yes. Katie talk about something that's going away. Yes. So, um, basically, if you're interested in buying a Mac, now we're talking uh, MacBook, iMac, I should say MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. um, iMac, Mac Mini, heavy rumors that next week Apple will have an M4 Mac launch event. Okay. So, that... And the one rumor is the Mac Mini, the, the, basically the MacBook Pro are just going to have new chips. So have an M4 chip. Um, the iMac, probably just an M4 chip, not much of a redesign of the physical thing. Mm. But the Mac Mini, which really hasn't changed shape and look since the Intel days, will be getting a redo. So more USB ports, possibly. Um, Maybe an update, a shape change. It's still going to be, you know, like a little, a, sh a short little uh, rounded square, but a little bit of a shape update, a port update. Because, like I said, the actual shape of the of the aluminum block has not changed in a long time. Mm -hmm. So, and I know people do like the Mac Minis because, oh, you know, it's cheap for a Mac. Um, especially if they put the M4 in there, it has lots of ports. And if you already have a monitor and you already have a keyboard and mouse, it's already set up. I mean, all you got to do is just plug everything in. So it's a lot cheaper and it's modular in terms of, you know, you don't have to worry about if the keyboard or mouse goes or the, and it's really portable if you're going somewhere that you can just hook up things to it. Literally when I was having the problem with my, uh, my Mac I had to go in the shop. I was trying to consider if the Mac mini was coming with me to Michigan. <laughs> so to yeah. get work done. Um, no, no, absolutely. And, and even I just did a really look, uh, quick look at the specs, the Mac mini and even the Mac mini studio are still on the M two 
processor yeah. situation. So I'm running a M1, not seeing, I, honestly, most of the issues I have is because I have way too many hard drives and they get kind of mucked up sometimes. Um, you know, some old Drobos and things like that. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm noticing just like hangs and beach mulling on, on Final Cut projects. But that's like a, that's like, a, that's more of an organizational issue than the machine itself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what an M2 Pro, I think, is in the MacBook Pro. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not feeling anything there. I would like a little bit more RAM, starting to butt my head up against that. In Firefox, of all things, <laughs> sometimes. But I'm also like uploading, downloading stuff. So I think that mm-hmm. ends up starting to, build out what's happening with the ram um so 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 i think that that it was yeah it, I, I get another year on my apple care i'm gonna be good for a little bit but anyways but no it, it is time to start look kind of looking at okay you know is there going to be an advantage kind of moving up here are we doing enough 4k on our side to to be able to pull up something like that but honestly if you got at least an m1 i think most people are going to be just fine yeah if you got an m3 don't think about it and if you got an M2, like, I, you know, see where you're at with things, you know, I, I the performance is going to be up, but I think it's really kind of nominal right now for most people, unless you are shredding 3D and 4K projects out of butt, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's, it's the M1 when it came out just blew. Absolutely. The existing Max Intel with Intel just completely blew them out of the water. Mm-hmm. It, I don't want to say destroy PCs because they're hard to compare still based on software, but especially for power versus how much um, power a chip versus how much power it drew. I am continually shocked. It's amazing. A battery on uh, yeah. Katie. I don't think you've done a battery uh, uh, repair since you've gotten your MacBook Pro. Like, is it still holding up pretty good for you? I feel like mine was up until I had 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 my issues. Yeah, I, it's it's fine. I mean, you can tell the battery started. It, it doesn't hold a charge as long, but still, plenty. it's an, it's long enough for what I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's been really impressive, and then even more so when even when I was had that what was it an M three I think I had for a week there as the quote unquote loner. Um, like other than like eight gigs of RAM is not okay. <laughs> so okay. Uh, By the way, Katie, I think we posted a new problem with your new monitor. <laughs> Did you see that? What? I lit up? <laughs> no, it's very shaky. <laughs> oh, no. That's not even, that's not the monitor. Oh, it that's isn't? me. I just saw no. it moving. <laughs> yep, no, but that's, that's the thing on here. Uh, okay. the, my laptop's on. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I just, I never <laughs> noticed it before, and I knew you got an upgrade to the monitor. So I, I just wondered if it was just like a, sh- uh, yeah, I know it's, it's larger, so I just figured it was wobblier. <laughs> so... Anyway, yeah, yeah, my new buddy's over here still. No, I just, I usually don't as much as I've been doing on my desk. That's well, the noise. Well, uh, I say we're talking about. Sa- oh, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to transition to your thing unless you had something. Oh, yeah, go thing. ahead. No, I go ahead. Say, I say, finish. speaking of new, we hear about new things, but how about some things that are going away? Oh, we're going to lose Foursquare, the app. Oh. Aww. So yeah, it sounds like um, it's still it transitioned. If you were, if you were original Foursquare person, we all fought over mayorship over um, tunnels oh, and bridges cares. in the city of Pittsburgh. Yes. So for a long time, um, that's how actually our friend Riz uh, got his nickname that I call him. We can talk about that after the show. Oh. Um, yeah, reveal how he got his nickname and whatever. Um, but. Uh, it's funny because, um, you know, we, we checked in, we all fought over mayorship and then it transitioned into more of a city thing. Like here's what's going on in the city places mm-hmm. to go. And like, that's a very busy space mm-hmm. already, which is kind of a challenge. Um, but so they're kind of, they're, they're partnering out, they're getting rid of it. Takes time to shout out the, uh, the founder takes time to shout out the old school four square consumer product <laughs> engineering and infrastructure for all the work they've done over the years and the super user community. Do you remember the super users? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we weren't, I, I don't think I ever made it to that level. It's very sad. So, it, but, and, and this company had transitioned pretty well. Like while you don't see, like we're not physically checking in on an app or, or like explicitly, not physically explicitly checking in on an app or anything like it used to be. And like, you know, your friends get notifications. It's kind of been replaced by, you know, check-ins on Facebook. If even, people even do that or just, here, here's my find my, you know, and follow that kind of situation, right? Um, 
they do a lot of back end. Um, my understanding is like back end kind of traffic and, and things like that. Um, so and then, like they kind of became more of a B two B kind of company to my work. Yeah. Right. And, and now that company still exists. It's just the uh, Forest Square as a product like swarm the swarm system which is what was the next step of it i think uh the mm -hmm. next product they released uh that does still exist correct yeah i think so now i'm gonna look i'm like do i still have that app <laughs> i like how apps quietly go away and then you just go to use them and you're like oh wait a minute what happened to it <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I, I did check it on the app store and the swarm app is still available mm. And even if you go to foursquare.com, it tells you the businesses like list or your business or your or stuff like that. Uh, but the big thing they pu they push now is the future of geospatial technology built by Foursquare. So I think it, yeah, it is that kind of thing. Like I think this is like you know if you do want to build a you know like an open table or a check in you know kind of system like this, it, it it builds on their their network or something, right? So you know bringing your own data um you know talking about for sales and exposure and retailers and holiday sales and things like that so it's kind of like another level of things so it's no longer much, no longer so much a consumer product i guess so it been swarm and i had no idea how many friends still use it <laughs> i felt like I'm randomly shocked. like some of our friends were checking in a swarm like i was getting i was getting like the facebook like posts about it like that automatic automatically oh, yeah. or something like that right like, I feel like Uncle Crappy might have been doing that in recent years. Uh, like, it was just like, Swarm, who's still doing this? Um, but I don't know. Swarm, start with friends. What's that? Oh, I'm afraid, I forgot I was Hello Kitty on a toilet. That was my um, image on Foursquare into Swarm. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that, that's pretty much our <laughs> brand, isn't it? So, um, anyways. Uh, so, <laughs> what else do we have here? I think I have a story or two, don't I? Um, mm -hmm. gee, that's, that's one thing. That's another thing, man. Mine are not exciting. Mine are about like Google and YouTube. <laughs> I didn't realize. So, you know, when you look up Google flights, I thought like the cheapest options were already there. Right. But apparently they are, they've updated Google flights to, to make it easier to find the cheapest fares. I, I, were they not doing that? I just thought rates were just terrible in general. But turns yeah. out they weren't. E I wasn't even seeing what I thought I was seeing. So uh, new buttons, uh, service for all the red eye overnight layovers you can handle. They say, and this is like uh, uh, you know when they say cheaper, you know that doesn't include like uh, we were actually trying to figure out something lately because we kind of had an emergency flight out. Uh, we're trying to figure out for somebody, and uh, we're like, well, you can go on Frontier, and it's only this much, but you're going to spend eight hours in this city. <laughs> or have four hops or something like that to get across country. And now those do become cheaper, but obviously emotionally taxing is the price you pay. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I guess there is that if there, if, if you do need to get somewhere on a budget for whatever reason, again, mm -hmm. if it's an emergency kind of thing or something like that, and maybe you don't have the flow for it, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, they're, they're adding more tools to that. Um, I'm always kind of fascinated by the uh, options you do have. Like when uh, people were having issues, because uh, remember the what was it, the Boeing Max 800? I think was having all the issues. You could actually they had a button added to Google Flights to exclude flights that will probably use this plane. <laughs> so, mm. and I'm just like, well, Southwest is going to use what Southwest is going to use. I'm kind of on my own right now. <laughs> so, and mm -hmm. I do believe Southwest started. Uh, 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 they started including Southwest in Google Flights. They had not for the longest time. So um, that, that so that's becoming even more useful after all of these years. Did any of you use these? I I, I mean we, we I basically go to Southwest and book my stuff or or have somebody uses Delta or American or something that's booking for me. But you know that hasn't been something on my use list. I guess you know it's just more. I know the way I'm going to get there. I I really haven't used it, but. We signed up with Southwest, so we're yeah. on their frequent flyer, and you know we don't fly that much. Mm -hmm. So uh, now to let you know the when you were talking about layover, when I visited my dad last year out in California, the flight, the cheapest flight out was Pittsburgh to Dallas, Dallas to Sacramento, mm -hmm. and then Sacramento to Palm Springs. That's not terrible. Well. Except at that least, at least it's all going the same direction. Right. But so. well, no, because Sacramento is north of the state. It's like mid half in the state. Yeah. 
Palm Springs in the south. So you actually, on the Dallas to Sacramento wing, uh, leg, you actually pass mm-hmm. Palm Springs, go north an hour and a half, mm-hmm. and then take the, another plane south an hour and a half. Yeah, but I've seen like going east to go west. <laughs> so, oh, no, no. Yeah, I've had yeah. that. Yeah, I remember years ago when I lived in um, Chapel Hill mm-hmm. to go to Newark. Some which of was those... the headquarters of the belt. I had to go from Raleigh Durham Chapel from, from from the Research Triangle from from the Raleigh Airport south to Atlanta, north to Newark. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's that sounds like a Spirit Airlines uh, trip because some of those those like you got to look at those when you do the hops. Like, oh, it's only this. Wait, why does it take me fourteen hours to get to Florida from Pittsburgh? Oh, because I go to Dallas <laughs> or something crazy like that. I was like, oh, this is by way of California or something, you know? So, but it's what it is. <laughs> Spirit, I think it was Spirit I was looking at. It was really funny because we're like, we, okay, we got the new cozy comfort system, which means that you'll have an entire armrest to yourself because we will not sell the middle seat. Because they're not adding comfier seats, first of all. Like, that's just not happening. Oh, no. They're just like, we will sell less and charge you more. <laughs> it's like, all right. Uh, that's one way to deal with it, I guess. Work with what you got. But anyways. Um yeah. Uh Katie, have you have you you, you mostly just a southwester? Right? Well, I like you said, I, I when I would use Google Flight, it was like there were things they weren't the price difference wasn't there. It was just yeah. like, oh, this is not far off from what I was looking at. Yeah. And yeah. It, and it's it's kind of annoying because you can't find very many like red eyes and things when you're trying to like, oh, let me see like it's like always hey, you want to do this one and blah blah blah. I'm like, no, that's not what I want. But yeah, and, I'm excited that's gonna be better. And Southwest doesn't. I think South I think it's part of this new restructuring, which really scares the crap out of me because everything I like about Starcast, mm-hmm. Southwest apparently is going away. Uh, so although it is fascinating to go from typically a Southwest, which is like you get those last couple people that can't figure out where to sit and then don't understand how the system works and and it gets a little maddening on Southwest, but then there's like then you go to like a Delta where everybody has an assigned seat. I'm just like, oh, this is a lot cleaner, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that that that's interesting. Um, what else we got here? Uh, YouTube's getting a bunch of updates here, um, including a uh, uh, mini uh, YouTube YouTube uh, sleep timer, which I said was like, you know, hey, you know, if you're uh, listening to Lo-Fi Girl. While you're going to sleep at night, <laughs> it'll be nice to have a timer on that. So it's not just playing all night, which I know I've gotten stuck with before. Like, didn't we like leave it on the TV in the hotel room all night or for some reason? Because we we're just like trying to get just pass out for some reason um, on one of these trips. But um, AI replies, mini player, uh, sleep mm-hmm. timer, uh, the biggest things that are coming out of that. So um, so keep an eye out for those updates. Nope, not that one. That one, that one. I use a, I I discovered the sleep timer on my Apple TV. That was really helpful when you when you're doing something like that. So you just want that soft glow sometimes, but not all night. Um, so, all right, Potter, you got a couple more okay. sitting here too. Uh, let me. Uh, well, we mentioned a couple of weeks. Or actually, probably a little bit longer than a couple of weeks ago about the AirPods Pro Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, will be given the hearing test and the ability to use it as a hearing aid well if you do have airpods pro 2 uh when the new version of the operating system comes out next week at 18.1 that will have the update that will allow you to do it okay so you know and they're actually releasing it as early releases to reviewers and people to actually try it out Mm. Yeah. Uh, because apparently it's not even available on the beta. You have to have the full blown 18.1 and it's a matter of people now using it in real life, not just hearing what Apple talks about it. Mm-hmm. And in general, now admittedly, these are handpicked people from Apple. So grain of salt. Uh, but the reviews are generally good in terms of being a, a people. And they, they actually test it with one person who does have moderate hearing issues Mm -hmm. and they're like yeah i can i was in the restaurant and i could hear the conversation much clearer and i could hear what's going on without everything being muffled or just you know 
being very loud. Mm-hmm. They did mention, though, that one negative is battery life. Obviously, if you have regular hearing aids, the batteries, you know, since they are literally the little watch battery hearing aids, uh, the little button here uh, batteries, that will last you a whole day. Where the AirPods, you know, they have the, you figure how small do those batteries have to be to be in your, to be in your uh, ears with all the technology they have in there with the circuit boards. Mm -hmm. So they say it lasts maybe six hours and then you're, you're, you're dead for your, for your headphones. So they said, you know, if you're using them as hearing aids and I'm sure Apple loved this sentence, maybe buy two. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah, I think it's going to be and you see hearing protection is also another one that they've added to here too. Mm -hmm. say not officially a concert mode, but it's just an enhancement of the, um, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the volume uh, leveling that they do with your transparency and adaptive audio yeah. mode. And so. if you go down a little bit further on there, they actually do the testing with the decibel reduction and, you know, how much, you know, it goes from, if you don't have any ear protection, you go from like, you'll start having hear, oh, well, actually, like, yeah, it, it goes from, oh, you may have hearing issues if mm-hmm. it's this loud for two minutes, but if you have the active hearing, you're good for an hour. Yeah, I'm trying to think how to adapt this to my situation because I have an issue where um, I'm listening to again. Usually, it's one ear. I'm listening to my comp, my uh, my video my video um, uh, people, like camera ops and things like that. And the other ear, I'm trying to get a sense for what the audio is doing that we're pushing out on a stream because I don't have an A1. I don't have a second person with two ears to really pay mm-hmm. attention to that. And, and and usually in a loud environment to begin with. So now I'm trying to overcompensate, you know, with that and make sure it's loud enough. I can hear somebody over all the noise happening. So I wonder if at what extent, like maybe this would help. Like, I don't know how to patch it in. If I'm wearing these, is it going to manage those things, you know, enhance them, you know, things like that. So I'd be really curious. Like maybe it is like I put my AirPods in, put all my headphones on and then, you know, it, I won't have that as bad of that ringing at the end of the night, you know? So, um, because I'm definitely not doing myself any favors for that stuff. Right. So, but, um, but you don't think of it in the moment. You're just looking to get the job done in the most efficient way. Possible exactly. Until you're yeah. just like, Ooh, I did this, this feels loud, you know, in here. So, or you're in a place in Long Island where they just jack all the music <laughs> the entire night and you have no idea what's going on uh, regardless of what you do. So, love those environments, right, Katie? <laughs> so fun. Yeah, yeah. And they have not, I've not been back there and I'm kind of okay with it. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah. So, if you got the AirPods, um, I need to go through a primer because I know all the gestures are there and I need to, I feel like I don't know half of what, like, sometimes I move my hair, head and I hear, you hear, you hear that little, you know, click kind of thing. And I'm like, I don't know what I just activated, you know, so, or, you know, cause it says, you know, Hey, uh, the so-and-so, uh, Instagram sent a long message, messenger sent a long message. Should I read it? And I'll kind of move my head, not intentionally and hear a click and it'll go away. I'm like, okay, I guess I said no, you know, kind of thing. So, but I think it is just like a no sound. Mm-hmm. Thing, right? Yeah. It's just a shake so, and or not. So it literally is. Again, it goes back to like that was Google Glass because remember it was like you had the head nod thing, right? And and I forget that triggered something, and and but I felt like I had like a tick, you know, doing it. So, anyways, so that's a good one. That's a good one to check out. Um, awesome. Tell me, tell me, tell me about the science. Sure. So if you remember from a couple of years ago, the James Webb Telescope that they ah launched, yes. And first of all, it did amazing and it's still producing mind blowing images. Mm -hmm. So what they're finding are pulsars where they're not expecting it. Mm. Now, pulsars are what's left uh, like in the image there. You see that thing in the middle of the image they circled and they're like, "Um, why is that there? (laughs) We based on the models they currently have, mm-hmm. they're like, okay, pulsars are basically you have black holes, and basically as they're as it's eating material, it's ejecting radiation from the side and giant streams, and they if they wobble, you 
from, let's say, from Earth's perspective, you get boop, 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 and it's very... So you get that. That's why they're calling pulsars. And based on... They were like, well, this should only be six to 700 million years from the beginning of the universe. Mm. Okay, so we're talking 13.4, 13.5 billion years ago. Given our current model, we're like, okay, given how much matter was around back then, this thing should not exist because there shouldn't be enough matter for it to actually create. And this is the fun part of science that a lot of people don't get. And this is kind of uh, going into my rant a little bit uh, because when I did it, when I found the stories on Google News, the headlines were always scientists baffled or scientists have no idea what's going on. And, you know, it, it makes it sound like scientists are like, oh, no, my model is broken. I'm so upset. I must do something. And there may be one or two people like that. But for the most part, if a scientist is working on something and they get information back and they're like, well, this should happen. And they go, no, this is what's actually happening. They're like, okay, first of all, let me make sure there's not like, um, there was literally at one time or poop on a radio telescope <laughs> that was causing interference. So let me make sure my instruments are good. Let me make sure my calculations are good. Let me check with someone else to make sure my calculations are good because I could have made an error. You know, peer review, make sure everything, and they'll look at it, okay, no. Our models say, A, we're getting B. This is exciting. This is new. This is different. This is breaking what we were expecting. And scientists are like, okay, now we have to figure, now we have to figure out why this is happening. Mm -hmm. So they're not like baffled. Or, you know, when I hear it's like scientists are baffled over new discovery. No, it's more of scientists were not expecting this <laughs> to happen. And now the fun part of why and trying to figure out trying to figure out why this is happening that's the fun part dave you got to say that like it's a 1920s news headline scientists baffled by this new discovery but but literally i put a uh, link for the google news mm -hmm. with all of it in mm -hmm. um literally like uh let's see if i can find the good one here you know it's like james webb telescope discovers quasars where they shouldn't be Ancient lonely quasar leave discovery leaves scientists confused. Web telescope captures things baffling scientists because they shouldn't be there. This is when uh, uh, science becomes clickbait, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, I've noticed this when I, I ask uh, I ask the AI to write headlines because I'm really bad about like uh, adding hyperbole to to what we do here. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and. and <laughs> Have you noticed that most of our, our videos are, are game changing X, <laughs> for instance? So, uh, not very interesting. Um, I'm wrapping my head around it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is, you try to simplify something as much as possible. Yeah. Because only if you're actively doing literal doctorate level stuff. Mm hmm. Can you kind of grasp everything that's going on with this? This is what popular science was for, right? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to translate this high level stuff to us. And unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, like it's still, I, I, I'm always amazed. Um, popular science is still in the uh, Apple News, for instance, and uh, I'll get articles from time to time, but they always, they always seem extra dumbed down. Same with PC Gamer, which was a magazine that I used to subscribe to back in the day. And they just seem extraordinarily dumbed down versions of what they used to be, or maybe just different because it's not in paper form and it just looks, <laughs> it just seems, it just seems so being on a website and just seeing how minimal it is next to yeah. other things. So, well, also they lot a lot. I mean, being an author writing in a magazine, you make no money anyway. Mm -hmm. But being a science person, you mm -hmm. make extra little money. Extra less, extra less <laughs> money. Smarter, you get teeny tiny. Smarter but tiny money. Um, yes, th that's why I like there's a couple people I follow on TikTok mm -hmm. who are actually studying for their doctorate in astrophysics. 
and they do explanations for the general public. It, yeah, we were, yeah, we are in this world of atypical um, uh, explanations, right? Um, mm -hmm. This is a side side track. I, I've been sharing this with with my wife a little bit. There is a guy out there who's apparently an airplane mechanic. Katie, let me know if you've seen this on the TikTok. But he'll explain like the video was like, you ever been on the plane and there's like there's like a smokiness coming out before you take off and you're like, oh, no, is there a problem? That happened like the first flight I went on and I freaked out. Um, and it's just like it's just condensation and things like that. Right. So he's explaining that process and how you shouldn't have to worry about it. But the but everything turns into just like the time in, and he explains some long winded thing from uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and like and then and then comes back around to it like everything's just an introduction in, introduction to him just saying about it. it's just like that time when frodo dealt with that da, 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 and saying was this and this and this and it's like two minutes long and and like 75 percent of that is him talking about lord of the rings while standing in a plane or beside a plane <laughs> you know doing this like katie have you seen these ones i have not if they, you need to get it in your feed like it, oh, sorry. It, it's come up a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but, you know, hey. Um, but yeah, yeah, like things like that or these explainer videos with these like kind of amateur documentarians or, you know, or I, I, I always end up in the, with the, the historical videos. Right. Um, but um, it's interesting. Like those are those are there and we're not I, I don't know what the source is anymore. Right. Other than going to like NASA TV for something like this or. I don't know. SpaceX kind of has a TV uh, uh, stream, right? Or is it just when they do the launches? I'm not sure, but um, they're definitely more interesting. I give them that much, but uh, but there's that. So, oh, pulsars and caves. Oh, so that reminds me, I just saw a bunch of Star Trek uh, trailers today. It's <laughs> for new shows that I'm excited about, but that's probably just me. So I'm not going to share with them here. Um, but it's 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 fun. Anyways, on that note, anything else you want to touch on, guys, before we head out of here? I tossed something in there last minute. Oh, what you got, Katie? Uh, social media using AI, truemedia.org. And I'm just starting, I just found this. I'm starting to play with it. Um, you are, you put the link with a photo or video in it. Um, and it is supposed to tell you what's the probability of it being fake. Oh. Like it will analyze um, the speech patterns. It'll analyze, um, what is it? It's like a reverse search and analysis, AI generated image detector, um, generator, universal fake detector analysis. Like there's all these like different things that it runs it through and um, you can sign up for free, but I've, I've done a few searches already just kind of see what it does, but it will tell you like the probability of whether or not it was fake, which is kind of interesting yeah, and much interesting. needed. So you, you say you sign up for free. Is there like a, do you see the, is, is it a generally open thing from what you can tell? I, I see donation, nonprofit, nonpartisan free. Okay. Never mm -hmm. mind. I answered my own question. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. And if you're, if you're on the audio version of this, like there's things like, you know, there's pictures of like Trump and Harris together. There's pictures of a, a Mexican president brandishing a menorah for some reason. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, um so yeah it's 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 interesting and, and, and yeah get, and these are things so notable deep fakes and it actually shows examples that are posted on uh, uh twitter x or whatever right um so mm -hmm. like you can actually go in there get the full experience create a free account i'm gonna i'm gonna send this to a friend of ours that is currently working in politics so i'm sure it'll be very helpful to them so yeah yeah so I, even, I, I, I want to send to I everybody <laughs> yeah so yeah like even when I just clicked on the was the Trump and that one at the bottom, um, the, were they together? And um, it detects AI generated photorealistic images created by Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, Dolly Two, and others. Mm -hmm. So it's got the yeah the Mid Journey like it's definitely pulling from all that stuff. Yeah, so it, it's like an Very AI Snopes of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I'm sure there's kind of like there's markers, and I think they've been really big about like putting markers in there or, or seeing other things like you know I, I know there's detectors for um, there's supposed to be detectors that are supposed to be helping uh, to make sure you're not plagiarizing your papers in college perhaps and you know things like that. So mm -hmm. so uh, it, you know thankfully when technology becomes a problem, technology will also solve the problem hopefully. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is going to be an arms race, to be quite honest. Something's going to oh, yeah. come up that's going to beat this, and then something will beat the beat thing. You know, it, it's gonna it's gonna be doing this for a while. But right now, two weeks from an election, 
uh, this is a really good resource for people probably to see what's going on. Uh, and please kind of share that, correct people. I, I, you know, I, I think that if you see something, because I, you know, I think we all have friends and family members that are sharing things there. You're just like, I don't know about this. Um, I, I think it is appropriate. I usually drop a Snopes article to be honest and just kind of, I just, try, I just Snopes and walk away, baby. <laughs> Sometimes. Cause I'm just like, you can believe me or not believe me or think, uh, uh, Snopes is full of crap, but here's some information about what's, what you're, what you're sharing, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, and, and you know, you, I mean, we probably still, we do it too. We see something like, Hey, look at this, you know? Um, but you know, and, and not think about it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, some of that stuff is just like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of let people know they're, they're sharing, they're sharing crap out there, uh, one mm-hmm. way or another. So, and, and also crap, I agree with, I have Snopes too. So yeah, you know, be like, nope, yeah. this isn't right. Actually, you know, wish it was, but no. Uh, so <laughs> I think that's very, very keep everybody honest, honest. Yeah. You can't solve all oh. the problems, but you can take care of your neighbors. True. And yeah. take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, yeah. one thing Ruth does is when someone posts something that is like, do I really believe this reverse image search on Google? Mm-hmm. Because you will find, you know, it's like, oh, here's Frank from Pennsylvania who had this. And you do reverse image search and you see like they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Ed- or you just do a search for the text. Mm-hmm. You know, do to copy the text, paste it in Google. And all of a sudden you'll find a lot of time you'll find just the same text and it's not it's you can't find the main source mm-hmm. and the one thing i do like about the true media uh like the image of trump and um, kamala harris together and it says here there are several signs that suggest it's digitally manipulated the lighting on both individuals does not match the environment mm-hmm. the expressions uh, appear unnatural I'm not saying i'm uh, not adding things about people not being able to have a natural thing depending on the person uh and the background seems artificially blurred so that's things that can actually help get your as carl sagan called it the baloney detection yeah but also you you need to consider not everybody has has the eye for it that we do right you know uh, right but it it, it, it's good to like okay this is what it's using so maybe this is also what i should be looking at Mm -hmm. All right now, I, now, now, now I'm in it. I'm in it now. I'm in the newsletter. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. Uh, hurricane did not flood Disney World. Good news, because that's also in my future. Uh, so <laughs> it is, yeah, it really is like AI Snopes. That's kind of nice. That's it, that's good. I'm glad. So, I'm glad somebody's working on this stuff. So, um, but yeah. So, anyways, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll probably do a little bit of Patreon. Maybe we'll dive more into this. <laughs> so, um, with less tact, who knows? Uh, but thank you, Dave Ponder, the iPhoneography podcast. Go check it out for your phone. Are you going to be talking about these lenses over on there or have um, you already? We will eventually. Um, I guess right I, now, we're going to be talking about Dwight, who's our newest co host, mm-hmm. and his uh, workflow that he uses for his photography, mm-hmm. which. It's a little different for what me and Greg do because the white uses full blown Adobe shoots in raw, uses full blown Adobe uh, on um, on his desktop. So it's you know in terms of getting his images, so just ways that different people work with images from their phone is what we're really going to be focusing on the next one. Nice, nice. I need a I need a I need a video version of that. So <laughs> to see workflows and stuff. Oh, that's the thing. Katie, I haven't tried plugging a hard drive into my phone yet. Ooh, oh, very exciting. Yeah, you could do that. I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. We gotta play with that workflow soon. KatieDudas.com is where you can see all the things going on. That's Dave. Uh <laughs> we can see all the things going on. I don't know. <laughs> I pulled it up because I want to remember what Dave! Like. there it is. There it is. Dave. You got all kinds of things going on. You're everywhere. Sometimes you post about it. Yep. I need to be better at that. <laughs> Maybe I'll work on that. That'll be my awesome thing of the week next week. It helps you remind you remember, remember that you did cool things, you know? Yeah. Like like it's my own like that's my journaling, right? Is like, hey, mm-hmm. remember that time you did this? Oh, I don't do anything. Oh, it turns out, you know, uh mm-hmm. this 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 and this happened. So um I figured or, out that that's what I do a lot with my photos on my phone. Mm-hmm. is like i they never go anywhere like i got ice cream yesterday i was like ooh, ice cream at this place mm-hmm. 
It's for yourself until like Google Photos mm-hmm. says, "Hey, remember this?" <laughs> so, um, and of course, at Sorgatron on all of the social medias for me, and you'll get a lot of updates and clips and things of everything that's going on in the podcast. I'm pretty sure more people watch the clips of the podcast than the podcast these days, um, but I think that's just where we're at right now. So, this podcast is just a generational machine for the Tiki Tots. <laughs> <So laughs> Or something like that. But anyways, we have fun uh, uh, with this. You can join us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we are going to take a little bit of a hiatus because I got a vacation slash work trip. Uh, well, back to back, basically. Uh, so and there's no way I'm doing shows during that travel time. So uh, so uh, the beginning of November might be a little light. And if I think of something for a special, maybe we'll put something out or maybe a classic episode or something. Um, uh, so keep an eye out for that, too. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, our Patreon supporters. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.